um, Bible book. Uh, so I'm quoting and I shall give them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name that shall not be cut off. Um, who were uh, six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust? Uh, how they lived, what we know about them, um, what they dream of and how we connected to them. This is actually our goal as researchers. We are trying not only to collect the names, but also to reconstruct who are these people, to find small pieces of puzzle and to put all together from different sources in order to understand better uh, and commemorate their uh, personality. Uh, you see here the quotation from the uh, formal uh, letter of David Berger. He was a young man from Vilna uh, um, who wrote in 1941, just before being killed, to his uh, girlfriend who managed to escape and uh, immigrate to Palestine. He wrote, I should like someone to remember that the once little person named David Berger. This is actually uh, explains what we are doing in our work. The names of the Holocaust victims are kept in the Hall of Names. You see here the picture um, of the uh, Hall of Name in the end of the historical museum in Yad Vashem, but um, online database called um, the Central Database of Shah Victims' Names, and um, we'll go there in a moment. Um, I want to show you this map. Um, you see here, actually, two parts of the Europe. This is a map uh, with division uh, uh, to the countries in pre-war Europe, we are uh, speaking about 1939. Um, the darker is color, the less names we were able to, uh, to find. So it explains actually the two um, processes. In the um, Western and Central Europe, uh, Jews were not killed in the places of their residence. They were taken to the transportations and sent to the East. So during this process of transportation, majority of them were uh, recorded somehow, so we could trace their names. The Easter we are going, the less names uh, we can trace because, um, especially if we are speaking about the territory of the Soviet Union, Jews were taken uh, at the places of their residence and killed uh, at the same places or nearby. And in German report, there were only numbers of killed Jews. The uh, process of not only killing, but also depersonalization and dehumanization was very much prominent. Um, and I want to show you one of the examples. This is a report uh, from my Zanzi Group B, the territory of Lithuania. Uh, we are speaking about uh, 1941. Uh, so if you just take one town, for example, uh, town Ukmerge in Lithuania, you can see in, in the report that is written 298 Jewish men, 255 Jewish women, uh, 88 Jewish children. This is very uh, typical report of uh, Nazis uh, to their commanders uh, and there are no enemies. So uh, this also shows our work today and uh, in a while I'll show you two very important projects of our research institution connected to, to these processes. So um, I want to show you uh, several examples um, how we work, how we try to reconstruct uh, the fate of the Holocaust victims. Now you see here um, the list of prisoners, actually. This is uh, prisoners' numbers in the concentration camp Mauthausen in Austria. This is, this is only one day uh, when uh, prisoners went to work and after that came back. So nowadays with our modern technology, our historical knowledge, our rich collection, we can actually take a number and to reconstruct who was this person. Uh, in this case, in Mauthausen, for example, we have original car file of um, prisoners. So with this number, we can see now this is the person who had family name, Bande, uh, first name, Hirsch, when he was born, where he was born, he was from Litzmannstadt, it's German name for Lodge in Poland. We have exact uh, street name and the name of his mother. We also have here um, the date and the places where he was, because before Mauthausen, he was in Gross Rosen concentration camp. Uh, searching further, I could trace the house committee book from Lodge Ghetto, because uh, actually Ghetto Lodge is one of the most um, well-recorded. 
So here, all the family members are together. You can see his mother and his siblings with date of birth, with address where they live, and we can also uh, put more details to this family story. And um, one of our important projects, which I'll speak a little bit later about that, when uh, private people donate us original materials, uh, one of family members who survived uh, donated us this document. This is ID uh, uh, card uh, which were given in Ghetto Lodge, uh, which gave an, um, the opportunity to work in the ghetto, and this is his mother. Um, I didn't find his own picture, but at least um, we have a document with uh, his mother's picture. It never can be completed, but uh, the more details we can find, it's, I think it's better understanding about this person. Another very important example, it's a very rare example I have to say, uh, which I could uh, trace. Uh, you can see here the list of crematorium from Auschwitz. Uh, we're speaking about 20 of December 1941. Uh, and actually at uh, that time, the crematorium only started to work. And there are several lists of this kind with numbers uh, of prisoners. Uh, majority of um, huge amount of Jews who were killed in Auschwitz were not recorded at all. People who were sent to the uh, gas chambers uh, did not go through selection. They didn't receive numbers. We cannot trade there. Uh, in Auschwitz in general. So in this case, it was all, in only beginning and it was not in Auschwitz, Birkenau, it was in Auschwitz one. So there is such a list and you can see here number two, four, five, five uh, four. And this is, as I told, the very uh, rare uh, case. There are only 600 photos of prisoners in Auschwitz. And one of these photos are of this prisoner and you see here, the same number and you can see here already uh, his faces but um, in the jail in the camp but um, during this research actually I went from the other side because we received a very big collection uh, that's family donated and now you can see the same man and here I know uh, mm. his name I know where he lived I know the name of his wife and I also I uh, know the name of his children who survived I think what is important for us to remember uh, the Holocaust victims this way, knowing their names, uh, looking at smile faces with good cloth and not in the concentration camp. So this is example that actually, I hope uh, gives us understanding the importance of such work. Um, now, uh, online database of Shoah victims' names uh, consists of, majority of sources. One of the biggest collection is a collection of pages of testimony. We have nowadays about 2.8 million pages of testimony, um, which are considered uh, as a virtual memorial for those victims who in majority of cases um, don't have real grave. Uh, this collection also uh, nowadays are part of the World Heritage uh, by UNESCO. Uh, the page of testimony usually filled out by uh, relatives, friends, sometimes researchers. Everybody can, can submit it. Um, today we have uh, about 4.8 million uh, names of victims uh, in our collection, but we have much more records. That means that sometimes there are several records about the same victim, uh, including some records um, which um, can be, for example, a list of deportation where we don't know uh, exact fate of the victim, what's happened at the end. Uh, there are also records of evacuation process in the Serratory Soviet Union, uh, about 900,000 names of evacuees. And um, a year ago, we started to upload the names of the survivors online. Um, it's a little bit complicated process because uh, it depends on privacy law and we can upload only metadata, that means only uh, digital data without any scans. So uh, I want to show you what is um, good uh, page of testimony, good uh, from the point of view of how it's filled out, how many um, 
information, how much information they can find from the page of testimony. It exists in different languages. You can see here the page of testimony in, in German. So if it's uh, very well um, written, we can find out here last name, first name, uh, parents' names, maiden name of the mother, um, occupation, um, place of birth, place of residence, place during the war, um, place of death, date of death, picture. And I have to mention that there are only 200,000 pictures attached to this the collection of pages of testimony. But nowadays we receive more and more because in the past it was difficult to, uh, people sometimes it was the only picture at home and it was difficult to, uh, to give it away. Nowadays it's very easy to scan and to send us and to upload online. So we receive many, many photos and attaching them. What is also important for genealogical purposes the information about the submitter. Uh, usually um, we don't have additional information, only what the person provided himself. Uh, sometimes it's uh, possible to trace. Uh, there are many uh, pages of testimony that were filled uh, out in 50s and 56, 57, because it was a very big uh, company in Israel. Uh, and we don't have opportunity to trace. Usually we advise to apply to International Red Cross in your country in order to search if uh, we're speaking about uh, some uh, submitters who lived in Israel. Uh, we also advise to apply to IGRA, Israel um, Genealogy Research Association, the help. So uh, in the past, when you search in our database, you received um, dispersed records, uh, each record separately. Uh, nowadays, we um, developed a very important for us tool called Cluster. It's kind of virtual folder. Um, the records about the same person are put uh, all together. It's um, very uh, comfortable for research. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, you can see the content of the cluster all together. You can see um, all the documentation and, and scans about the same victim together. Um, you also can um, establish the ultimate fate. That means that, as I mentioned, sometimes in the, some um, sources, some records, there are no uh, any understanding what is the fate of the victim. Uh, if we're speaking about, for example, list of victims from the ghetto or list of deportation, we don't know what is the final fate of this victim. So putting all the records about the same victims together, uh, we can, in majority of cases, um, understand what happened. Sometimes uh, there are um, complicity uh, because, um, for example, uh, I'll take an example of Ghetto Lodge. The majority of uh, inmates were killed, about 95%. But that means that still 5% have survived. Um, and this collection was taken in general in, as a whole, and each victim received the status, uh, presumably uh, murdered. But if somebody applies us and tell this person survived, uh, we're asking to fill out a survivor registration form to send us any uh, evidence, photo, something after the war. And we taking off uh, the records from the uh, victim's database and putting it to the survivor's database. Now, um, uh, actually, Yad Vashem database is not genealogical database. It was uh, established for commemoration. And we don't have genealogical tools like doing family tree or something, uh, connecting uh, different uh, brothers and sisters and the records. Uh, but during uh, doing clusters, we can um, sometimes trace uh, submitters who can be relative between them. And we have cases when people via pages of testimony uh, find out uh, relatives. We also really want to engage public uh, to help us because sometimes we cannot, we are doing uh, clusters automatically and we're doing it manually too, but uh, sometimes we cannot uh, be sure if we're in different records is spoken about the same person. For example, if um, I can give an example, if some submitter who was relatives, uh, mentioned the nickname from home and mentioned also the date of birth, not correctly because he didn't remember. But in official documentation, you can find uh, the full name and it's not Jewish name, but um, 
maybe some non-Jewish name and uh, the date can be different. So it's very difficult to be sure that it's spoken about the same person. Only relatives actually can understand it. So it's very simple to uh, suggest as cluster online just to choose uh, several records that you are thinking they are su suitable for this cluster to compare them, to see if it's uh, the same person from your point of view and to fill uh, online form and to send a suggestion. It's not automatically, it's right to the, our staff members from the Hall of Names and they check it in, in um, new uh, materials are uploaded online about four times per year in, in databases. So the next portion will be updated. Now I want to show you uh, how to search in online database. You're going to digital collections, show our names database. And what is important for me to mention is our si uh, system of searching. Usually, uh, if you're similar to genealogical databases, you are using Soundex um, to, to search names. But in Yad Vashem was developed very unique um, form of searching, it's called synonyms. That means that uh, different variants of the same family name or of the same first name are uh, put all together. And it doesn't matter what you are searching in Hebrew, in Cyrillic, in uh, Latin letters, in which language you are searching, you are seeing all the variants of the same name. It's also very important, I think, for English speakers, because I know, for example, for, in the United States, the spelling of the name is very important and people consider different spelling, different names. It's, for us, it actually doesn't be important at all. Um, and uh, because all the variants connected to, to one another. Uh, there are much more variants in the first names because there are many nicknames and many different variants in different languages of the same name. And just speaking about the geographical location, it's also the same system of synonyms because first of all, uh, our geographic is, um, was stated uh, on the time which were previous World War II uh, because during the war many times the borders moved and um, it was decided uh, that our geography is um, just before the beginning of World War II. That means that you are searching such city as Vilnius, for example, Vilna, which nowadays is in Lithuania, in our Dutch it appears uh, as in Poland. But different names of the same city or of the same town are connected to one another. And you can see here the example of uh, city Bratislava, um, the capital of Slovakia. In uh, German language, it was called uh, Pressburg, and in Hungarian, Pozon. If we would not connect it to one another, we never would receive all the, all the results of searching because in majority of the documents, it appears in Hungarian in this case. So um, I want to show you one example of uh, searching and uh, the importance of uh, completing different uh, uh, pieces of information from different sources and putting them together in order to uh, reconstruct what happened to this person. I search Agathe Epstein. Uh, you can see here three records and let's look uh, for them. One record is from uh, Austria. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, there is an uh, archive of uh, resistance in Austria, it's called DERV. We don't have um, their scans, we have only metadata, the full database that they uh, provided us. Um, what we can see here, this very uh, rich information about uh, Austrian Jews. Um, first of all, we see the transport and um, the date of deportation and where she was deported. And with them, um, our different databases, I'll show you in a while, we can uh, actually research what happened with this transport. Now we see uh, here your uh, place of residence with the address. And if we want to continue research this family, we can apply to Austrian archives and to search. We see here date of birth and also uh, place of birth and place of deportation. <coughs> Now, if you go to the next record, this is, as I mentioned already, uh, records from Lodge Gate are very rich. Uh, we have house committee books. And here we have address in the ghetto. 
What is important in this case that uh, usually the family members were all together in the ghetto, the same address. So via this address, we can trace who were together with her, which family members. And uh, the third record here is page of testimony submitted uh, by her son. What does it mean for us? That means the first of all, he survived. And we see that uh, there is an address. Uh, he built out uh, the page of testimony in 1995, and he was living that time in the United States in New Jersey. So, if you want to continue this um, uh, investigation, uh, we can try to uh, search for his family. I suppose maybe he's not uh, alive anymore, but uh, we can uh, trace his family. I think such small details are very important for genealogical research on the family. Uh, now, when you received uh, results of your search, when you press to the name, you receive the window where it's written more details, you are pressing it, and you're receiving um, all the metadata and also scan. Even if the original document uh, is written in different languages, it can be Hebrew or any other language, or Russian or Spanish, um, or Yiddish, um, all the time you have uh, English translation, transliteration of the names and translation of the main information. What's uh, important here, you can, uh, by pressing the name of the submitter, you can receive all the records that uh, the one person submitted. And by pressing the uh, button submit editions and corrections, you can send us suggestions. So here I have to mention that if you find out that there are mistakes from your point of view, and we're speaking about historical mistakes, or maybe date of birth, or maybe uh, name spelling, we don't correct it, because for us, uh, this is a historical document, we cannot correct it. We usually, in this case, um, ask a person to submit a new page of testimony, or new uh, survivor registration form, and we'll put uh, all these different uh, documents with different data to one virtual folder. Uh, this is also the way to, uh, to send us photos uh, or maybe additional documents. Maybe you have some, I don't know, birth certificate or something like that. It's very welcome always. Now, this is, as I mentioned, if you press the uh, name of the submitter, you're receiving all the records uh, from the same submitter. Now, if you go to advanced search on the first page, you can search, you have, you have, the more uh, fields for searching. And you also can search here by the submitter. Um, many times I hear uh, people say, um, my relatives submitted pages of testimony, but we don't know the names of the victims. So this is the way to search. Now, uh, I want to go to another database. Uh, we are speaking about uh, document archives. Yad Vashem was the largest uh, collection of SWAR related documentation. We have about 220 million pages of documentation, 135 testimonies of Holocaust survivors of different kinds, written, audio, video, and so on. Uh, more than 500,000 uh, photographs. And as I mentioned, uh, in this names database, we have more than 4.8 uh, million of names. Um, I want to show you how to search in online ar archives. Of course, it's a very small part of the database. Uh, majority of the documents can be um, uh, searched in our reading room where Debbie uh, visited once. Uh, but if you don't find anything that you are searching for, you can apply us. And I'll show in the, in the end how to apply us. So, uh, but still, I think it's important to know how to search online. Um, we are trying to upload online as much as possible, but sometimes we cannot uh, upload some materials because of our agreements with different archives, because all kinds of privacy law, and it's, it's rather complicated issue. So if you go to digital collections, to uh, document archives, um, you're receiving such a window, I suggest you to go straight to advanced search, um, so, uh, actually here you need to search by the keywords or by geographical location, it depends what you're searching for. Uh, here as example, I took uh, uh, 
word letter, I wanted to search letters from Warsaw. Uh, so I choose Warsaw and I choose letters. I made synonyms in geographical location. You see it from the right side. That's exactly what I meant. It, it can be written Warsaw in English. It can be written Warsaw in Polish, for example. So uh, I received online 21 results. Of course, there are much more in, in, in a database, but online 21 results, when you press to one of the uh, results, you are seeing an uh, explanation what is that, um, and you're receiving also the scans. Here you can see the letter written in Warsaw in 1942. I have to mention that unfortunately we don't have translation service. So, um, you need to understand languages in order to understand these materials. Um, the photo archives is also online. So you're going to photo archives. And nowadays in this database, you can search um, photographs from three different departments. First of all, there are photos um, which are attached to the pages of testimony in the Hall of Names. There are photos uh, from uh, photo archives in cell. And also there are photos uh, from the database of writers and other nations. All these uh, collections can, can be searched uh, via this tool. And um, this is just an example of photographs which attach to the page of testimony. And now uh, the technical uh, tool to search by keywords, uh, word and, if you want to search two words, put and between then and it, it will search you um, all the cases where these two words appeared. So I searched children and DP, displaced persons. There are many, many um, materials and photographs from displaced persons camps after the war. And you can see one of the example of beautiful girl, uh, which was born in um, DP camp Amberg in 1946 during uh, baby boom, which was there. Uh, now I want to pay your attention and go back to that map that we saw in the beginning. And I spoke about um, Central and um, Western Europe where Jews were taken to the transports. So our um, research institution uh, has a um, very important project. It's really a research academic project. Um, and one of them are deportation database. So uh, they took um, different sources uh, about specific transports, uh, archival sources, testimonies, literature, um, and they research it. And the results are searchable online. Uh, if you remember when we spoke about um, details about transportation from uh, Wien to get a lodge, so we can find by the date or by the name of uh, number of transports or by the name of the city. Uh, and when we press specific transport, we are seeing the general information, um, map, uh, sometimes survivors' testimonies, archival sources, bibliography, uh, historical background, addresses of deportation, transport route, many, many, many details. Um, in many cases, this information, this is the last one known about specific victim, uh, when person arrived, for example, to Auschwitz and was sent to guest chambers at the same day, we can at least know um, the date of death, approximately, we don't know exactly. But for people who want to say prayer um, about uh, the victim, this is very important to know. Uh, another very important project is, um, we are speaking here about uh, the territory of Soviet Union. And as you, um, so um, Nazis uh, did not uh, record any names. They only uh, sent reports with numbers. And it's called untold stories because in many uh, small places, majority Jewish population were uh, killed and there are nobody to tell their story. So our colleagues of, from the research institution uh, also uh, search in different sources, um, take this, stories and try to reconstruct what happened there. So um, here we're speaking about small places, not big cities, in the territory of Belarusia, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Lithuania. Um, and um, if you don't find any town, uh, that means it's worth to check in a while because the projects are continue working and they add 
all the time more materials. And here, for example, I took um, town Bobruisk in Belarus. And uh, project has three parts. First of all, general explanation, what was the community, what the history of Jude there, the map, the pictures. Uh, the second part are murdered site. It's really uh, were taken um, archival materials, written testimony, German reports. Uh, so it's extraordinary commission report, which is one of the most important sources on the territory of Soviet Union. And uh, here you can see uh, the quotation from the report of uh, Isaac Group B, and I'm quoting, uh, by carrying our special action in total uh, of 5,281 Jews of both sexes were shot. The town of Bobrusk and its nearby area is now free of Jews. And this is very um, typical report. It shows us that nothing to search about persons in such reports. Um, the commemoration process, it's the third, third part of this project, it also was complicated during the Soviet time. Um, only in the end of 40s, the survivors who came back to these small uh, places managed to um, establish some memorials uh, with the names or maybe with the, some um, mentioning in Yiddish who were killed there. But during all the Soviet times, uh, till 1991, the Soviet Union was destroyed. It was forbidden to um, uh, establish such memorials. Uh, uh, and all memorials was written very typical phrases. It's um, kind of Soviet citizens killed by uh, German fascists. And there, nobody of, was mentioned as Jewish. <coughs> Uh, only after the destruction of Soviet Union in 1991, uh, Jewish communities started to um, put uh, the names on the memorials. And uh, this process was still like recently, I don't know what's happened now, but uh, several years ago that still happened. Now the database of writers among the nations are uh, also online. A writer some of the nations are gentle people uh, who live their lives to save Jews. Um, so uh, if you're going to their database, we can search by the survivor or by the rescuer, or we can search by the geographical uh, location, just if you want to see how many uh, cases in the specific area or just to learn the history of these uh, survival stories. So here, for example, I typed uh, town Shaulia in Lithuania, and there are 121 uh, results. We don't speak only about Shaulia, but also about uh, the whole area around it because Shaulia was a uh, regional center. Uh, now, when we pray the name of the uh, rescuer, we are seeing the whole story with the photos, with the um, uh, explanation when this person received this title, when his name is recorded in Yad Vashem, in the past, uh, if you were uh, in the campus, you of, uh, of course saw small plaques uh, under the trees. Uh, nowadays, there is no place already for that. And uh, several years ago, it was established the um, Garden of Writers. And there is a wall of honor there uh, where the names of new writers uh, are put during the ceremony. Uh, you also have here a file number and if you are interested in uh, reading the story and seeing archival documents inside this file, you can apply us and we'll send you. Um, I want to mention survivor's testimonies. Uh, actually, uh, the testimonies are not online in general, but um, some small amount of testimonies are online, about 200 of testimonies, which are really uh, fresh, which were taken several years ago and it's pilot project um, and it's in Hebrew, unfortunately. Uh, but what is uh, maybe helpful for general information, there is a video testimony resource center. You can choose by the uh, geographical location or by the some topics to learn. These are not um, um, the whole testimony, there's a small part, about 10 minutes each. Uh, you can learn about specific uh, phenomena uh, from the survivors. 
Uh, we have YouTube channel and last two pandemic years, it's, we use it very actively. There are a lot of lectures there and uh, films, it's testimonies also, uh, important source for general information for study. Uh, I mentioned in the beginning the project when people uh, donate us um, materials from home. It's called Gathering the Fragments. Actually, it started 11 years ago already, uh, and it's an um, extremely successful project. Um, many years ago, actually, Yad Vashem was realized that people have in Israel, uh, people have at home many uh, original Holocaust-related materials documentation, photographs, artifacts. And in order to save them, uh, Yad Vashem applied to uh, people in Israel and in the world too, but majority of the natives are from Israel. Um, we have very good conditions for um, keeping the materials and laboratory for conservation and restoration. And all these materials are digitized and uploaded online, which is important task to uh, um, made it uh, to make it available for public, for researchers, for families, and so on. Um, sometimes people don't want to give us uh, original materials, but send us uh, scans. It's also acceptable. Um, what is important for us not only to collect as much as possible. Uh, it's important, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we want to know who were these people and to research about them. So it's important for us to know what is behind the picture or behind the letter, what the uh, submitter knows about this documentation. Uh, because of that, we are asking to tell the story uh, and during the meeting with our staff members, um, their record, what the submitter knows. And you can read here some interesting stories which were uh, submitted together with the documentation. Now, uh, Yad Vashem is official copy holder of Arizon archives, which uh, original archives in Bad Arizon in Germany. This is huge database and actually demands, I think, a separate lecture. Uh, I don't speak about that now, how to search, but when people apply, so, apply us, we also uh, search in Arizon databases. So um, if you want to apply um, for searching for some uh, maybe inquiries, uh, you can contact us uh, via this email or you can um, apply via our website. After our meeting, I'll send to Debbie uh, my slides with explanation with email. Uh, so you'll receive all this uh, information for the usage uh, for searching. So don't worry about that. Now I'll be glad to discuss and to answer the questions and maybe if somebody wants to open the microphone and to speak I'll be glad. Yes everybody can just um, unmute and if you have a question you can either raise your hand or just kind of put yourself on, on mic go right ahead. Who'd like to ask the first question? And, and while we're waiting for that, Seema, um, like I think many of our members, as you were speaking, I was going ahead and starting to use the information that you're providing. So I just wanted to share with you. Um, okay. Interesting that you brought up Ludge because this is where my mother, uh, her brother, and two parents were. I've been through your entire photo collection. And as you pointed out, the Ludge ghetto was perhaps the best documented ghetto uh, of World War II. So there's, there were literally thousands of photos from the Ludge ghetto that I went yeah, through. There were several photographers there, very well-known collections. Yes. And That's so, um, you know, if I, if I wanted to start by narrowing the search, because again, there were, uh, as I recall, there were 13,000 photos I was going to go through. I did, uh, you can search under the Yad Vashem photo section, more specifically, I put in Ludge, the name of the town. And then I knew that my grandfather and my uncle were in the leather resort, as they called it, or the leather workshop. And as you can see, by putting that into the search engine, I can narrow down the photos. I've already been through yeah. all of these. But this is exactly the, I'm sorry, <laughs> being so... <laughs> 
Go ahead. Uh, this is exactly the mistake what you did because okay. uh, you need to use the word and between two words. Okay. In order to receive more results. Well, there you go. No, less. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, e even so, I'm going to go back and see if I can find anyone who resembles my mother's family. And I did find uh, some incredible photos here. I am sure that I found my mother in at least one of these photos. And So um, maybe it would be great if you can um, send kind of command. And we'll put in our inside database the, you know, the identification if you, if you recognize somebody. Absolutely. I see, um, Rhoda, you have a, a question. Yes, I do. Um, so there's an Isaac Kowalski that is listed in the Yisker book as murdered, and it's in the show a database, you know, with that source. However, he did write a chapter in the Yisker book, which implies that he survived. And I cannot find any evidence of him after the war. Um, I've checked with the Svencion, you know, survivors groups and, and there, there just doesn't seem to be any information about him or his family other than what's in the Yisker book. So it's, it's contradictory that he's in the necrology, but, um, but did write a chapter. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about that. Uh, I would first of all, uh check in, in the original, uh, in the book, mm -hmm. because uh, it's taken, uh, you know, oh, the I table, did. the names from there. Oh, yes, I did. And it's, it's, it's there in the book. Yeah. Uh, you can apply as so we can, uh, we can try to check in uh, ours and archives. If he survived and immigrated after that to Israel, it seems to me he can be recorded in the displaced person camp. So it's worth checking. But I want to mention in this case that actually uh, Yad Hashem has very large collection of uh, uh, score books. But also majority of these books are scanned and available in New York, New York Public Library online. So it's worth checking there. Thank you. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Look, it's, it's kind of, you know, theoretical thoughts. Maybe it's spoken about his cousin with the same name. Well, it's possible. It be, you I know, guess. very often uh, children were uh, named by the same grandfather. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's, this is the case. Maybe not. Right. And, well, I, I, and Rhoda, I, Rhoda, have you checked with the International Red Cross? Have you submitted a, yeah. a tracing form? Mm -hmm. Any anything? Not with anything. I mean, that was years ago, but I periodically check the Bad Arrelson archives online and nothing has come up. Nothing I would I would try red, the Red Cross again. I, I could try that. No, it doesn't helpful nowadays. Yeah. So I think if, if this person submitted it in the 50s, uh, I would search for his maybe grave it, it that, yeah. it's just that You need to search, but um, for example, tracing documentation in ours in archives are not online. You need to send us an inquiry and we'll try to check if we can't find anything. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's contradictory that he would write a chapter and, and be listed in the necrology. Yeah. And the family all fits, you know, everything makes sense that it's the same person. Yeah. It, it could just simply be a mistake um, that he's in the necrology. My, my father was listed as one of the dead um, in any number of places, including on a stone wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's because he didn't let anybody know where he was at the end of the war. He just refused to give his name to officials. So, um, it, it could be just a simple mistake or as Seema pointed out, it could be that uh, a cousin with the same name mm -hmm. passed away and uh, the person who you know to be your relative was the one who wrote the, um, wrote that chapter. Because yeah. in the uh, score books, usually there is no much information about victims. It's usually written kind of last name, first name, maybe wife's name. When it's not uh, the wife and children. And so sometimes we cannot be sure about this, uh, about what person is spoken, because mm -hmm. this can be some kind of, uh, be I'm a street family name. I don't know. I'm, 
I need to see the exact example to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Barbara has a question too. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that in the, the Eastern countries like in Belarus, mm -hmm. uh, the Jews were murdered in their towns uh, rather than being sent to a concentration camp. And I, I know that's true in Rogachev. 3,500 Jews were murdered in the town after they dug the trench that they went into. But there is some talk and things I've read about some people being sent away to camps. Were there, were there some? Uh, it depends on the place. For example, I'm from Lithuania, from Kaunas and Shulai, uh, Jews were sent to uh, Dachau and Stutkov concentration camps. It depends very much on the geographical location. Okay. But Eastern, Eastern uh, Belarus, probably not. I also have there my roots. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Other other questions. Again, you can unmute or use your uh, emoji to raise your hands yeah, under reactions. Not, David. Not, not a question, but a com uh, you uh, talked about Babrusk. Uh, fortunately, my grandparents left in 1906, and my grandmother and grandpa, grandfather, uh, their brothers and sisters, all left for different places, to Canada, to France, the United States. And uh, I've been able to locate all of them and their descendants. So that makes for a big family tree. But it's fortunate that my grandparents left. Uh, my mother was born. They left in 1906. My mother was born in 1907 in New York. Seema, one of the things that you mentioned was that uh, the Yad Vashem databases and the pages of testimony were never intended to be used for genealogy. That was not their, that was not the original purpose, but obviously we're using it for that purpose. Of course. Um, and um, one of the things that frustrates me when I, I, I find the pages of testimony the most useful rather than the lists um, is that there's there's no contact information. It says the name of the submitter. Um, no, usually there isn't information. Just if, uh, as I mentioned, it was a big company in the end of 50s. And in majority of cases, the information is not really relevant because this person is not alive. But if you have uh, his name, at least you can try, what, what you can try to do, you can try to search for his gravestone in Israel. It's, the majority of cases it's available online. It's not really common street name. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe sometimes on, on the gravestone, you see it's written, uh, our beloved father. So you can understand that there are children. Mm -hmm. And this case give you a, an opportunity to go ahead. It's, it's been challenging, but um, I, sure. you know, I, I, I do yeah. understand this was not the original purpose. As a matter of fact, my mother filed multiple pages of testimony about the same people. I'm not sure why she did that. In um, different years? Yeah. Ah, okay. People applied several times. This is also one of the reasons to, uh, to do clusters, to put all these records together. I will. I'll, I, I picked that up and I thought it was also a good tip to do an advanced search under the submitter's name because yeah, just only to uh, take into account that sometimes if the name is common street and if you search only by the submitter name without any geographical location, you can receive all different records which are not relevant for the another submitter with the same name. It's better to put some uh, geography together with submitter name to be sure that it's relevant family. Yeah. Uh, I think more information about survivors can be traced in our archives, but uh, uh, together it it's really um, gives us fuller picture about as victims as survivors in the same family. Did you want to um, share, Seema, about the importance of creating a page of testimony even today? Yeah, I actually mentioned it to this. For us, it's mm -hmm. a virtual memorial. 
I think it's very important. And um, it's also very important if you're speaking once more about the territorial Soviet Union, for example, where we don't have many names. So in many cases, uh, the page of testimony that you have to submit, um, it's the only way to commemorate this victim and to put his name to the database because we don't have any official materials, any documents. And if, if you know about uh, relatives or maybe friends of the family who were killed, it's very important to submit page of testimony. But also we have um, so-called survivor registration form and you can submit it about survivors, about your parents, for example. And uh, I'll send you the links, but it's available online in different languages. You just can download it. I can show everybody where it is, if that's okay. Can you see my website now? Of course, of course. Or re rather, um, here we go. It's right here. Download the pages of testimony and the... And there is also explanation how to fill it out. And uh, there is an opportunity also to submit it online. To tell the truth, we don't like it really because um, I think uh, handwriting is more appropriate for uh, for historical documents and to you know to feel who was the submitter, how he relates to this family. But uh, online forms are also um, you can send it. It's appropriate. When I was in Yad Vashem around, I think it was 2013. Uh, and I was spending time in the library. Um, at the end of the day, I was tired and had read everything I could read. And I sat down at one of your computers. And again, you have to remember, these were older computers at the time. And I thought, I'll just try one more thing. And I typed in the name of a small town in Poland where my grandfather was from. And up popped a testimony about 20 pages long in Hebrew and in Polish. And it was from a cousin of my mother's who had survived the war. It was not in any database. Uh, it wasn't anywhere online, I should say. Are all of those, are, have you finished uh, digitizing some of those written testimonies now? Are they, are, are uh, more documents available online than they, there were, say, eight or Comparison nine years ago? Comparison to 2013, I think, yes. I'm not sure if this is online. Let's let's try to uh, to search it just now. Just a second. I'll... Okay. <clears throat> when I when I think that, I, I would have never found that testimony had it not been just for a moment of serendipity. Um, I, I know it would have somehow changed my life because I found just this incredible amount of information about a cousin uh, my mother's oldest cousin and what had happened to her and that she had survived. Mm -hmm. uh, did you receive it? First of all, you can apply, we'll send it to you. Oh, I do have it. I, ah, I have it. Asked, What is his name? Uh, it was her name and it was, um, her last name was Rubenstein and her first name was Zipporah. Mm -hmm. I don't... You see, it's, it's not online, as I okay. see. Not yet. Uh, I'm sure this is available in the reading room. And uh, as I mentioned, we unfortunately don't translate it. Just... Well, but the important thing to know here is that everybody should go to Yad Vashem because there are things in the reading room. Or to apply us. Yes. <laughs> That's right. But still, go to, go to see Yad Vashem. It really oh, just... isn't <laughs> an incredible place, isn't it? Right. Okay. Do we have more questions? I have a, a Romanian branch that I just have almost nothing on. Uh, and they're not in Moldova, they're, they were from Bucharest. Uh, do you have records? Not no. many. Romania is rather poor yeah. uh, from the point of view of documentation, but we need to try anyway. I, Yeah. The fact that the name is Schwartz makes it even <laughs> more difficult. <laughs> yes, but still, it depends where they uh, were during the war and which way they went through. Seema, would you also speak about some of the uh, academic 
uh, work, other academic work that's done. I know, like Avuteno, Yad Vashem publishes a Holocaust periodical, a journal, Yad Vashem Studies. Of course. Yes. And this is also an incredible resource, especially if you want to find background. Back in 1985, when I first went to Israel, I went to Yad Vashem. It's a very different place now, but I, I went there and I discovered this journal. And in the journal, there was a story about a death march from Bor, Serbia to uh, a, a book involved Flossenburg and ultimately to Dora Middlebaum. And I knew my father had been in Bor and there were only 60 survivors. When I came, I made a copy, came back to the United States. My father read this article and he said, this man's story is my story. And I had always been afraid to ask my father questions about, I tried to, but he didn't want to talk too much about it. So having that story in the Yad Vashem study really led me down another incredible path of understanding my dad and what had happened to him. And um, later on to fill in a lot more gaps about that death march. So um, to tell the truth, uh, yeah, uh, I would say this way, um, Yad Vashem study, this is very good source for academic research. I'm not sure this is very helpful for genealogical research. It was just by care that you find out the story. Uh, mm -hmm. We usually suggest to search for the uh, survivor's testimonies who went through a similar way. For example, they were a similar age from the same place of birth. And this is the way to research the story of, of relatives that you don't know. Look, we, we have very, very big library in different languages. And nowadays there are also many, many memoirs which people wrote. It's, it can be found also there. And all kind of encyclopedias, kind of a uh, bit of Jewish life before and during the Holocaust when about an explan with explanation about small uh, towns. It very much depends on the geographical location, the fate of the victims, because for example, uh, you talked about Buchenwald, it's very well recorded uh, camp from the point of view of documentation. It's a huge collection in arts and archives from Buchenwald. But if you're speaking about other camps, it's, it's, it's always depends on the, on the geography. Mm -hmm. Looks like Rode has another question. Yes, so I was just um, on the Arrowson website and I think I found my Isaac Kowalski in the Stutthof camp. Maybe it's used to Lithuania. It, right, it, right. It appears to be the same from the same town, and the age is correct. You know, the birth year is correct. And I'm just wondering, do you have anything on your website where I could further research Stutthof? When you found uh, Stutthof, uh, you found envelope and the prisoner card. The well, envelope I, is not I, a. Yeah. The envelope is not historical document. This is archival envelope. And uh, on the right side, uh, the right uh, up corner, you can see here a TD number. If there is TD number, you can apply. So we'll send you his tracing documentation from ours. There is not a TD number. Mm -hmm. No, there's just a prisoner number. No, no, on the envelope, not on the prisoner card. Uh, there isn't, they're not showing the envelope. Of course, yes. Okay, let's do, okay. I didn't mention to speak about Arson today, but let's, I'll show you what, what, what I mean. Just can you moment. show, can you screen share so we can yeah, yeah, watch yeah, your fingers fly? No, just a second, I'll show you what I mean. I can screen share what I found. What is the name? Kowalski, K-O-W. Just a second, wait, 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 wait. Kowalski what? Isaac. I I S A A K. No? What happened here? Just a moment. This is the reason why I don't like to search online. It's the first, when he was the first one. When he was born? It's the first one from, okay. from Nova Svensson. So this is the, the envelope. envelope. That's right. There is no. Oh, that's the envelope. Okay. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. Just a moment. 
Uh, I don't know if this person survived. You need, we need to search more records. From here, we don't know if he survived. If we would see here um, TD number, right. that means that he survived and applied after the war for tracing his documentation. But here, I don't know if this person survived. So he's probably in the Yisker book because he's presumed not to have survived, I guess. Yeah. Maybe this is the, yeah, I suppose this is the same person who mm -hmm. was mentioned in the, um, Yes, yes, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. So uh, really send us an inquiry. I don't, I'm not sure this is the same person who submitted their, uh, the article in the scorebook. Right, I have to investigate. That's a very good strategy. Yeah, I have to investigate that. Mm -hmm. okay. But this is actually the story that Lithuanian Jews were sent to Stutthof and to Dachau. Mm -hmm. And do you have the transport? Is that on your website? I didn't look yet. Um, um, I don't think there are transports uh, which, are, which was um, uh, researched by our colleagues from Lithuania to Stutthof. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. They actually, um, they, they started on the Western Europe and they now go uh, Eastern. They research now in Poland, which is much more complicated because it was not so organized well as in Western Europe, but they didn't arrive Easter yet. Seema, mm -hmm. can you share with us one of your favorite success stories in reuniting oh. <laughs> families? Wait, was it here? Uh, if you would search on our website, there is a story of um, reunited families. Just a moment. It seems to me it can and it can be shown on the website. <sighs> Just a moment. Yeah, I'll show you. No, it's not that. It's not that what I mean, just a moment. What it was, this one, here. They are cousins. You know, it's uh, less and less opportunities these days to chase brothers and sisters. Yeah. The first generation, unfortunately, gone away. So it's usually a cousins. And the typical story is uh, actually about the Soviet Union, about Polish Jews who fled to Soviet Union uh, just uh, what was Nazi's invasion. Uh, and sometimes the families were divided and those who migrated just after the war didn't know that somebody survived and stayed in Soviet Union. And only after 91, when Soviet Jews started to immigrate, they could trace relatives. Is that your favorite story about those two cousins? There are several, there are several stories of this kind. Mm -hmm. It's always very touching, but yeah. no. Uh, I, have, uh, I have another question. I don't want to uh, steal ever, anybody else's time. Well, that's okay. Uh, uh, my, I have been to the, I have received from Errolson and a couple of other resources, some information about what happened to my mother's brother. Uh, he was taken from the Ludge Ghetto in 42 to Skarzysko Kamiana from Skarzysko. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He was taken to Buchenwald. And just as the Russians were coming, the Nazis took my brother and many other, my uncle and many other men to Theresienstadt. I have a card that mm -hmm. shows that my uncle was liberated from Theresienstadt. Right. And, yeah. and uh, he must have had, I know that they had a terrible 
uh, cholera outbreak, I think, um, right after liberation. But he was given a card that said he can leave quarantine. And from there, the trail is cold. I cannot find what happened to this uncle. I would think he would go back to Ludge to look for any possible surviving family uh, or to go to Palestine because the family was made up of Zionists. But no, um, anyway, he couldn't go to Palestine straight. He could come firstly to the displaced person camp and after and from there to immigrate legally or, or illegally. Okay. So if he went to a DP camp, is it possible he was in, um, I have a record that he was in the Sella area of Germany, which is near Hanover. That okay. was also near Bergen-Belsen. And I know there was a big, a huge DP camp there. Yeah. And uh, this was British zone, North American zone. So what, what does that mean for some of the other avenues I have for finding him? If he was in the British zone, but no, it doesn't mean anything for you. You need to search by his, his name in Arison. I did. It's the, the trail is cold. So I that I know that he appears in Sharit Taplata. I don't think I'm pronouncing no, that right. Sharit Taplata, it's 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 a, it's nice source, but without rich information. Right. It's just lists of names that say he was a survivor. Exactly. Exactly. What's his name? Uh, last name was Gallas. G A mm -hmm, G A L A S, and okay. his he was known as Menachem or Monyak or Yehuda. Yeah, this is his book and one. Yeah, but you see here you have tracing documentation number. Right. So if you send us an inquiry, we'll send you this tracing file. It'll it, was his, his file be more than the documents I see on the screen? Sure. Okay. This is after the war documents when survivors uh, applied because they wanted to receive compensation. They applied to our to international tracing service in order to search for the evidences of their route to apply for the compensation. Okay, I, I'll be happy to send that off. You'll receive it from me tomorrow. You're welcome. Um, that could be him as well. This is, this is Therese. There, yeah, there's the um, transportation Therese's card. Stuff. No, it's not yeah. transportation card. This is card from Therese. Right, well, I was told, I went to Therese and they said this showed that he was free to leave the camp. Is that correct? Yeah, this is uh, taken from this book of Theresa on the way it's, you see the, where, the number where he is recorded. Mm -hmm. There is no any identification about transport, how he arrived. Yep. But you'll see more information in, uh, in the tracing documentation. Okay, thank you. So you need to apply with the number, just a moment. Whoa. No, it's, it's slow. And maybe it's also uh, in, 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 in TD, you can see uh, they met, they just recorded there which record they found about this person. It should be written if they found his DP documents. Okay. So this is the number of TD. Yeah. It would break my mother's heart to know that her brother was alive at the end of the war and she never found him. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How do you know he was in the area of Hamburg, you told? Uh, at the Sharita Plata, uh, the, the, the list of surviving remnants, he's, mm -hmm. in, the, he's in the fourth edition and his name is listed there at in the area of Sella. So I went to Sella, Germany, and there was a, uh, a synagogue that was being used as a place to register Jews after the war. Mm -hmm. So he, he was there or somebody with his name was there. Oh, but they didn't know what's happened to him? No. Okay. He just registered there. So he was in the area of Bergen-Belsen. Okay. 
send us an inquiry. We'll try to, to we'll see what, what can be found. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure. Who else would like to ask Seema a question, especially um, one of about a specific person you're looking for, like I am and like Rhoda is? No other questions? Richard, Robert, Jonathan, Michael, Ava? Any of my Barbaras or Susans or Sarahs? Okay. Well, Barbara, do you want to give the official thank you? Because I, <laughs> I can give you it know, unofficial we're, one. We're, uh, we're bowled over by your expertise uh, at knowing these files and databases and the approaches to them. I'm a librarian, and so I, I'm especially impressed. And also, I, I guess I was thinking in the library world, we call that looking at names that appear to be the same and deciding if the people are the same, we call that authority work. So the authority work that's being done is, uh, is really, really impressive. And we thank you for spending some time with us this afternoon and helping us understand. And uh, we're looking forward to getting your notes because once we start trying to search ourselves, I know we'll need them. Uh, sure. And if I, if I can add, Barbara, I'm just, so grateful for people like you, Seema, who dedicate their life's work to these kinds of projects. Um, I, I wish it were around, these databases were around 50 years ago, but I'm so grateful that we're able to confirm the fate of so many of our family members and to put names to those numbers. I think that's a really, really important um, job. And I thank you so much personally for your efforts and the, the efforts of your colleagues, not only today, but also 50 years ago. Thank you so much. And uh, we're really glad that you had an opportunity to meet and you are welcome to apply us. Sometimes I have to say, sometimes it takes time to answer, but we uh, answer all the inquiries and we'll try to help as much as possible. Thank you I'll very much. I'll send you, baby, I'll send you uh, the files now and you'll forward to the participants. Okay, thank you so much, Seema. My thank pleasure. You, Seema. Does anybody have a brick wall um, question that they've saved up for the end of our uh, meeting today? Especially some of our guests because they are guests and this is probably their first time uh, visit to our organization. There's nothing more than a, that a genealogist likes um, besides his or her own research than trying to help somebody with theirs, especially when we're bored of working with our own family tree or we've reached a couple of dead ends. So Jonathan, I think you're a guest today. Would you like to unmute, perhaps share uh, what your interest is or any of our other guests? Jonathan, I picked on you. There we go. I unmuted. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I signed up for Jewish Gen, you know, back uh, about 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, did a little, little research and it was very frustrating. So I sort of stopped after that. Um, and uh, I was just sort of interested to hear what the new databases were like and, and how, to, how to look in. I, you know, I have, I have some, you know, relatives who were children who uh, died in the Shoah. A, a, a two girls, a Rivka and a Malka, who were sisters. And I've tried to look them up on... Uh, on the um, Yad Vashem site, and I couldn't find them. So I, I don't know if that's if there's a you know different different ways of looking for that. I, I think their you know their last name may have been Flesher, and I think they were from the from uh, Gilson Kirshen in Germany. And I've tried I've, I've, while we've been sitting here, I've been trying to search some of the things you've been showing, and I haven't been able to find them. I have to say that German jury is very well recorded, which is one of the best records. Right, right. Uh, maybe the family name was changed. I don't know. Just, right. but I mean, there they would have been. Uh, I think they were. They may have been cousins of my of my uh, grandmother. So that would be. 
Um, it, it's not clear that that was their last names. Well, Jonathan, you mentioned you mentioned mm-hmm. you mentioned uh, Jewish Gen from that you were interested in 20, uh, 20 years ago. Have you been back to Jewish Gen because it doesn't look the same as it did twenty years yeah, ago? You're right. Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> Um, I have I have not before this, so uh, but I can certainly take a look at that again. Yeah, I would actually, um, you know, I I don't know if Seema would agree, but uh, you know, to to do multiple concurrent um, searches, and you're going to go to the JewishGen.org site and go to Unified Search, perhaps would be a good place to start, and put in the surname. Uh, you heard Seema use the expression Soundex. Mm-hmm. And you can see that if the name has multiple spellings, you might want to start it out with sounds like or phonetically like. It's um, better to use phonetically like. I, I agree. You'll mm-hmm. get fewer searches, put in their name. And, and also, if, if I can add to that, uh, several months ago, Yad Vashem uh, signed an agreement with Jewish Gen. And nowadays, um, when you're searching the family name in the Jewish gen, you're receiving also the link to the results in Yad Vashem. Not the results, but to the, it's, it's like kind of a uh, link with logo. When you press, you're arriving to Yad Vashem website. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, you can also type in Malka or Enrifka as a given name. Mm-hmm. And if you've given a hundred dollar donation, you get to, you know, have multiple fields. Um, right. So you could put in the town as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so this would be a good place to, to continue your research on these um, two sisters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And okay. Arlson as well as Seema pointed out. Sounds good. Appreciate yeah, I think you're going to, I think you're going to be busy for a while, quite frankly, <laughs> after today. I think flesh, flesher, um, Barbara, am I right? Means uh, something to do with meat. Somebody's right. in the in the butcher right, right. industry. Uh, butcher. Like fl- yeah. flesh is more meat. more like flesher with an eye. But... Yeah, but that's the great thing when you use Soundex, you get all those. You, get, you even get some you think of you wouldn't think of. I have all these Yaskins, and I also can search Eskin which actually happened when people immigrated, Yaskin became Eskin. And that's not something I wouldn't have thought of. So. David, Eskin you've done- is very much Jewish name because it came from mm-hmm. Asia, which is Esther. And this kind of sign of Esther, this is very much Jewish family name. Mm-hmm. 